Welcome back, dear friends, to the Crimson Academy's course on the Kitab Iran. In this section, we're covering paragraphs 102 through 104 of the Kitab Iran. This is the start of the second part of the Kitab Iran. In this section, Baha'u'llah describes the nature of divine reality and explains the powers and authority of the manifestations of God. Some following key points to note in these paragraphs. The manifestations of God have absolute sovereignty over all that is in heaven and on earth. God's purpose in sending his manifestation is to educate the souls of men and endue with grace all created things. The primal will is the divine will and reality that appears in every manifestation of God. In the opening paragraphs of the second part of the Kitab Iran, His Holiness Baha'u'llah highlights that the manifestations of God have absolute sovereignty over all that is in heaven and earth. This dominion applies to the worlds of the seen and unseen, as well as the material and spiritual. It is inherently different from the sovereignty known in the human world that is conditional on material possession, power, and absolute obedience and submission to the subject to the sovereign. His Holiness Baha'u'llah states in paragraph 102 that the power and authority of a manifestation of God prevails even if no one is found to follow him or if he is bereft of every possession. Hence, such sovereignty is spiritual rather than material, as it is a perfect reflection of the sovereignty of God. Abdul Baha explains that divine sovereignty is both ancient and eternal, that it has neither beginning nor end. Sovereignty necessitates subjects, ministers, trustees, and others subordinate to sovereignty. Could there be a king without a country, subjects, and armies? If we conceive of a time when there were no creatures, no servants, no subjects of divine lordship, we dethrone God and predicate a time when God was not. It would be as if he had been recently appointed and man had given these names to him. The divine sovereignty is ancient, eternal. God from everlasting was love, justice, power, creator, provider, the omniscient, the bountiful. And friends, this was from His Holiness Abdul Baha in the Promulgation of Universal Peace, page 159. All the manifestations of God are endowed with divine power and dominion. Abdul Baha explains that the Jewish clergy expected that the Messiah would sit upon the throne of David, whereas His Holiness the Christ had neither throne nor semblance of sovereignty. Nay, rather, he was a poor man, apparently abject and vanquished. Therefore, how could he be the veritable Christ? In reality, His Holiness Christ was glorified with an eternal sovereignty and everlasting dominion, spiritual and not temporal. His throne and kingdom were established in human hearts, where he reigns with power and authority without end. And friends, this is from Abdul Baha in Foundations of World Unity, page 74. Baha'u'llah further points out in paragraph 103 that the power of the manifestations of God is all compelling and that their sovereignty is invincible. That this has been repeatedly proven by previous manifestations of God. Despite the initial persecution or even martyrdom of a manifestation of God, 
and despite the subsequent severe persecution of his followers, his cause is eventually established, and the hearts of millions of people are attracted to him. Baha'u'llah then explains that the manifestations of God are proofs of the following holy words from the Quran. Verily God doeth whatsoever he willeth, and ordaineth whatsoever he pleaseth. These words are an indirect quotation from three different verses in the Quran. He said, O my Lord, how shall I have a son, now that old age have come upon me, and my wife is barren? He said, Thus will God do his pleasure. And this is from Quran chapter 3, verse 35. And again, but God will bring in those who shall believe and do the things that are right into gardens neath which the rivers flow. For God doth that which he pleaseth. And this is from Quran chapter 22, verse 14. And lastly, and whom God shall disgrace, there shall be none to honor. God doth that which pleaseth him. And that, friends, was from Quran, chapter 22, verse 19. In paragraph 103, Baha'u'llah briefly mentions that God's purpose in sending his manifestations is to educate the souls of men and endue with grace all created things. This has been a recurring theme in many of the tablets of Baha'u'llah, as well as the writings and tablets of Abdu'l Baha. Baha'u'llah states that God has a twofold purpose for sending his prophets. The first is to liberate the children of men from the darkness of ignorance and guide them to the light of true understanding. And this, friends, is from Baha'u'llah, gleanings from the writings of Baha'u'llah, page 79. The second is to ensure the peace and tranquility of mankind and provide all the means by which they can be established. Spiritual development results from gaining a true understanding of the words of God the acquisition of divine attributes and good deeds. Baha'u'llah emphasizes that the purpose of the one true God in manifesting himself is to summon all mankind to truthfulness and sincerity, to piety and trustworthiness, to resignation and submissiveness to the will of God, to forbearance and kindliness, to uprightness and wisdom, his object is to array every man with the mantle of a saintly character and to adorn him with the ornament of holy and goodly deeds. And friends, this is His Holiness Baha'u'llah quoted in Shoghi Effendi's book, The Advent of Divine Justice, page 24. Baha'u'llah further announces to humanity that the fundamental purpose animating the faith of God and his religion is to safeguard the interests and promote the unity of the human race and to foster the spirit of love and fellowship amongst men. And this is from His Holiness Baha'u'llah in Tablets of Baha'u'llah, page 168. Abdul Baha refers to the manifestations of God as the divine and perfect educators to train and educate the souls of men inasmuch as the purpose of the manifestation of God and the dawning of the limitless lights of the invisible is to educate the souls of men and refine the character of every living man and again this is Abdul Baha quoted in Shoghi Effendi's the Advent to Divine Justice, page 26. Abdul Baha further explains the holy manifestations of God, 
the divine prophets are the first teachers of the human race. They are universal educators, and the fundamental principles they have laid down are the causes and factors of the advancement of nations. And this is in the Promulgation of Universal Peace, page 437. Finally, Abdul Baha mentions that the only purpose and the real outcome of the mission of the manifestations of God is the training of the people. And this is in this is by Abdul Baha in the Foundations of World Unity, page fifty six. In paragraph one hundred and four, Baha'u'llah describes the concept of divine reality and highlights how it is different from human reality. These concepts form the core of the Baha'i philosophy on the theme of divinity. According to His Holiness Abdul Baha, there are four different kingdoms in the world of creation. The first is the mineral. The mineral, that is to say, matter or substance appearing in various forms of composition. The second is the vegetable, possessing the virtues of the mineral plus the power of augmentation or growth, indicating a degree higher and more specialized than the mineral. The third is the animal, possessing the attributes of the mineral and vegetable, plus the power of sense. And the fourth is the human, the highest specialized organism of visible creation, embodying the qualities of the mineral, vegetable, and animal, plus an ideal endowment, absolutely minus and absent in the lower kingdoms, the power of intellectual investigation into the mysteries of outer phenomena. And friends, this was from Abdul Baha in the Foundations of World Unity, page 48. The attributes manifested by the vegetable and the animal in the world of existence are vastly different, although their main point of difference is the faculty of senses. Abdul Baha states the difference in station between man and the divine reality is thousands upon thousands of times greater than the difference between vegetable and animal. And that is a quote from Abdul Baha in Selections from the Writings of Abdul Baha, page 47. In paragraph 104, Baha'u'llah shed some light on the nature of such differences. God is beyond every human attribute manifested in the physical world such as corporeal existence, ascent and descent, egress and regress. The difference between the realities of the human and God is so immense that it is impossible for man to grasp the significance and essence of the divine reality. The reality of God envisaged by the human is the fanciful image of his human condition. It doth not encompass God's reality but rather is encompassed by it. That divinity which man doth imagine for himself existeth only in his mind, not in truth. And this again, friends, was from Abdu'l-Bahá, Selections from the Writings of Abdu'l-Bahá, page 47. God is beyond all the spatial characteristics of matter, such as separation and union all proximity and remoteness, and no sign can indicate his presence or his absence. In addition, Abdul Baha provides more details on the nature of divine reality. The divine reality is unlimited and immeasurable and can never stop or deteriorate. And this is from Abdul Baha in Divine Philosophy, page 125. Abdu'l-Bahá states, the divine reality is unthinkable, limitless, eternal, immortal, 
and invisible. And friends, this is in Abdul Baha talk in Paris Talks, page 57. The reality of the divinity is sanctified and exalted beyond the comprehension of all created things, can in no wise be imagined by mortal and understanding, and transcends all human conception. And this is in Some Answer Questions, page 127. The reality of the divinity is sanctified above singleness. Then how much more above plurality? And this was from Abdul Baha. In Some Answer Questions, page 127. There is a gulf of understanding between the divine reality and human reality, that any direct interaction and communication between God, the Creator, and the human is impossible. It also means, as stated by Baha'u'llah, that God is without any peer or equal. He is and hath from everlasting being one and alone, without peer or equal, eternal in the past, eternal in the future, detached from all things, ever abiding, unchangeable and self-subsisting. He hath assigned no associate unto himself in his kingdom, no counselor to counsel him, none to compare unto him, none to rival his glory. And friends, this is from His Holiness Baha'u'llah, the leanings from the writings of Baha'u'llah, page 192. The Baha'i view of the divine reality is distinctly different from philosophies such as pantheism that believes God is in all things and all things are in Him. In describing pantheism, Abdul Baha explains, the proponents of the unity of existence hold that real existence is even as the sea and that all created things are like unto its waves. These waves which signify the created things are the countless forms which that real existence assumes. Hence that sanctified reality is the pre-existent sea and the countless forms of created things are its originated waves. And this, friends, was from Abdul Baha, Some Answer Questions, page 335. In paragraph 104, Baha'u'llah refers to the divine wish as the primal will itself. This term has been used in a number of the writings of the Bab. A study of these writings reveals that the primal will is the divine will and reality that exists within every manifestation of God. The Bab explains, in the time of the first manifestation, the primal will appeared in Adam. In the day of Noah, it, came, it became known in Noah. In the day of Abraham, in him, and so in the day of Moses, the day of Jesus, the day of Muhammad, the apostle of God, the day of the point of the bayon, the day of him whom God shall make manifest, and the day of the one who will appear after him whom God shall make manifest. And this, friends, was from the Bob, Selections from the Writings of the Bob, page 126. This confirms the unity and oneness of the manifestations of God. He then continues by stating, it is this primal will which appeareth resplendent in every prophet and speaketh forth in every revealed book. It knoweth no beginning inasmuch as the first deriveth its firstness from it and knoweth no end for the last oweth its lastness unto it. And that was from the blessed Bob, selections from the writings of the Bob page 126 very good friends